half of our people don't live in the communities anymore. There's push factors. There's not enough houses, not enough jobs. People leave for educational reasons, different reasons. So half of our people live off reserve. And so they live in your towns, they live in the cities. And so looking at ways and means to make sure that there's adequate housing and adequate education and healthcare services to those people really becomes incumbent upon all of us to find ways to work together. And yeah, that EPF financing, and why I stress it, stress it over here, with the First Nations in your territories, they're funded differently, directly from the federal crown, because there's obligations over here. Treaty, federal crown fiduciary trust obligations over here. And then you've got EPF financing over here. But there are things and places where programs and services can overlap and why we need to work together. And I mentioned education. You're going to have young First Nations men and women going into your schools in town. There's some schools on the reserves, but there's also some schools in town. So curriculum changes, First Nations teachers, how do you make people feel welcome in that system? It's about working together, collaboration. And so when we start talking about the fastest growing segment of Canada's population is young First Nations men and women. Canada has an aging workforce. Canada has a skilled labor shortage. Point I make is we all have to invest in the fastest growing segment of Canada's population, which is young First Nations men and women, investing in education and training, K-12, post-secondary technical vocational skills training, walking in both worlds, so we have language, culture as well, part of that education, healthy individuals. You're going to get huge returns on investment in the future, and that's very important. So once this gap, I always talk about this gap, there's a socio-economic gap that exists in Canada. Canada, according to the United Nations Human Development Index, 6 to 8, quality of life. You apply the same indices to First Nations people, we're 63rd to 78. So it's almost like 6 versus 63rd, this gap. It's huge. This is what we need to address together. We have to close it. Because once this gap closes, huge, huge positive contributions to Canada's economic growth. Huge positive in billions over 20 years to Canada's overall GDP growth. Because the social costs are coming down. First Nations people are being educated and trained and working. Less drain on the social system, on the healthcare system, on the, on the justice system. Very important to keep closing that gap together.